welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers. By robots. By gamers. Some of whom are robots. I'm Bajo. And I'm Hex. And I am the Grand Slam Tennis Champion, Bot Darren. Coming up on the show, we take a look at you draw for the win. I exercise my superior tennis processor with Top Spin 4. Darren, I can totally beat you in a game of tennis. Negative. Yeah. I'm currently running a simulation of a tennis match between us in my competitive sports matrix. It doesn't look good for you. 15 love! Competitive sports matrix? Darren, are you just making this up? Negative. 30 love! It's not fair, Darren. 40 love! It's match point, Bajo. You're not even you're not even doing it. You're just shaking around a bit and pretending that you're running a simulation program, but you're actually just being mean. Will Bajo fail to return serve? It's only a matter of time before his noobishness loses him the match. Setting applause capacitors to maximum. I think he's going to be stuck in this for a while. Mm. We should just get on with the show. Mm. Oh, come on, Darren, that was in. Negative, Bajo. My internal Hawkeye registered the ball 1.482 millimetres wide of the line. Did you take into account the equatorial bulge affecting your measurements? You cannot be serious. My measurements are infallible. Unlike some humans. Tennis has had a long history in video games, all the way back to Pong. But the latest addition to the Top Spin franchise is probably the most realistic tennis game ever developed. Top Spin 4 gives you one of the biggest rosters of players to choose from. From the current top pros like Roger Federer to old school legends like Bjorn Borg. The game options are pretty standard. There's exhibition mode for quick matches with the standard multiplayer options. And a career mode which allows you to create a player and develop them into a legend as you play through the various tournaments. Top Spin is all about timing and strategy. A quick tap is a control shot and holding down the button gives more power but is less accurate. The game also gives you on-screen helpers to tell you where the ball is going to bounce, whether your timing is off, and how powerful your shot is. It's tempting just to jump in and start playing, but I think it's much more worthwhile to go through all the training. Badge, at first I got really frustrated. I couldn't get the timing right at all, and I found the movement of the players really sluggish. Sometimes I wanted the player to move one way and hit the ball the other, but my player just stood there and did nothing. Aced. But you know, Hex, I think that actually makes the game more complex, like a real game of tennis. The game is pretty easy on normal, but once you ramp up the difficulty, you really have to develop a strategy to defeat your opponents. And there's enough depth in the controls for players to do that. 40 long. Gamers that don't have the patience to go through the training before they play are going to get frustrated and bored easily. Graphically, the real-life stadiums are spot on. And although it's disappointing not to have Wimbledon there, some of the more unconventional courts are pretty awesome. But how bad do the play models look, Hex? <laughs> yeah, if you don't look too closely, they may look like their real-life counterparts, but during replays and pre-match animations, you get hit with both creepy and ugly. And that's really disappointing, considering the level of detail in other sports sims these days. I thought the soundscapes for the game were realistic. They even have the grunts and shrieks down. But I thought it lacked a punchy soundtrack for the menus and training. I didn't really have a problem with that, Hex. For me, it was the lack of commentary. I think tennis games are the last sporting game just not to have any commentary, and that's a real shame. There are heaps of unlockables, from different outfits for your pro players to different scoring modes. And you can customise your own player to your heart's content, from clothes, swing style, and even what temper you want them to have. Yeah, and I think this is what makes Top Spin 4 so rewarding in the long run. There's just so much to explore. If you find career mode a slog, go online. Got friends over? Play King of the Court party mode. Final thoughts? 
Well, I understand they're going for realism above all, but I think for non-tennis fans, it's a little bit too complicated to get any real enjoyment out of it. So I'm giving it seven and a half out of ten rubber chickens. Look, I think it's one of the finest tennis games ever made. You know, besides some dodgy player models, there's enough here to keep you playing for a long time. So I'm giving it nine out of ten rubber chickens. Oh, what's he up to now? Darren. <sighs> Did you know I have a sports matrix? I was Robot Athlete of the Year in Robot Secondary Academy. Oh, not quite. Not quite that time. I, ow! Oh! Oh, dear. You're trying so hard, aren't you? Seriously. Game, set, match. Darren. Welcome, Sport of Australia, to the Ask Good Game Fact Zone, where ignorance is history and history is made every day. Our first question comes from Nathan in South Australia. That's mine. What is the black stuff in grey rocks? I don't know, that's a little vague, Nathan. Well, he probably means the coal blocks in Minecraft. Mm. You can destroy them with a pickaxe to get lumps of coal, which you can use to make torches. Torches are essential because they prevent mobs spawning in dark places. You can also use coal to power furnaces and minecarts. For a beginner's guide to Minecraft, be sure to check out our review from Season 2, Episode 4, which you can watch at our website here. Now, hey, hey, it's Jaden. <laughs> Dear Good Game Spawn Point, is there any DS games that only involve one hand? Because I've got one arm and it sucks. P.S. Darren rules the noob world and he can't negative that. Thanks for writing in, Jaden. Most games and controllers are designed for two hands, but there are quite a few good games on DS that only need one. Rhythm Heaven may look like a simple music game, but the difficulty is brutal and it's definitely a hardcore title. The mystery adventure games of Phoenix Wright are brilliant too. Lots of crazy characters and brain-breaking puzzles. The Apollo Justice and Miles Edgeworth spin-off games are well worth a play too. In fact, you'll be able to play most puzzle games, Jaden. The Professor Layton games in particular are awesome. I don't think any discussion on DS gaming would be complete without giving props to Advance Wars. It's the king of turn-based strategy, and you can play it entirely with the stylus. Now, on to help someone who... Hmm, someone who can't tell us their name. Is Kirby a boy or girl? Please answer. We asked this as a forum poll. Over 7,000 spawnlings voted, with just under half thinking Kirby was neither a boy or a girl. Just a blob. But we think the 30% of spawnies who picked the boy option are correct. Kirby is referred to as a he in some of his games, including the latest Kirby's Epic Yarn, and as a pretty jolly guy in Kirby's Superstar. Kirby is also going to be turning 20 years old soon. <laughs> Next is a strategy fan who's tired of playing the waiting game. He does not look his age. I've heard there's another Age of Empires coming out. Please tell me when. Smile. There is indeed a new Age of Empires game coming out. It's called Age of Empires Online, and it's going to be one of those free-to-play online games. Premium content will cost extra, of course. It always does. We don't have an exact release date, but AoE is due out sometime this year, and we'll hopefully have all the strategy goodness of the other big games in the series. Next is Abby in Melbourne. Oh, Bajo, she wants to know about Darren. <laughs> Hi guys, I love your show. I watch almost every day. I just wanted to ask, how does that robot of yours work? Work? He doesn't do any work. He just sits in that little cave of his and sulks. Well, I think Abby was asking more of a science question, Barjo. You heard me. Darren is a fully autonomous robot designed for playing games and lasering noobs. His servos, laser weapons, octa-core positronic brain and built-in toasty oven are all powered by an internal nuclear reactor. But don't worry, he's properly shielded. There's absolutely no danger of any radiation leaking out. Are you sure, though? He's always leaking oil all over the carpet. Well, next one is Flinders, who lives in... Wow, Magnetic Island. Cool. Gotta get that robot toilet trained. Hi, I love you. Can you get Lego Batman too? P.S. Darren is a noob. Sorry, Flinders, there's only one Lego Batman game and Warner Brothers hasn't said if there's ever going to be a sequel or not. Hmm. Well, cheer up, Barjo. There are other Lego games coming out. Like Lego <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean, which is due out next month. Yar. <laughs> Thanks for all the letters, spawnlings, and remember, if you have a question of your own, simply submit it at our website. It seems like forever since we first heard about the 3DS, but it's finally here and it was more than worth the wait. Yeah, it really is a pretty amazing machine, and unless you already have a glasses-free 3D TV, then the 3DS will be most people's first experience with 3D gaming mm. without having to wear some kind of glasses or crazy head goggles. 
The first time I moved it into 3D and you can see that 3D effect is quite stunning. The graphics are really crisp. It's not something we can really show you on TV though. It doesn't translate through the camera, but it is 3D without glasses. The screen is also slightly wider and the touch screen is more responsive to your finger, more than the last DS anyway. Mm, and aside from the bigger screen, it also has a little thumbstick that's quite responsive and accurate. Mm. We haven't had the chance to play that many games that use it just yet, apart from Super Street Fighter, but it works really well. There are a few problems with the machine however. The battery life is very short if you play with 3D enabled. A full charge only lasts for about three and a half to four hours, so you really have to remember to put it back in the charging cradle any time you're not playing it. If it had a nuclear core like me, it would work forever without needing to be charged. The 3D does cause some problems for humans as well. A few of us have experienced headaches or tired eyes, and Nintendo does say that kids under six shouldn't play this at all, so if you're one of our younger spawnlings, then you're gonna have to wait a few more years before you can have a go of this one. Mm. The 3DS comes preloaded with a bunch of little games that shows off what it can do. They're called Augmented Reality, which is a fancy way of saying a game that interacts with the real world. Mm. Most of the games work kind of the same way as iPad. You put a special card on a flat surface and aim the 3DS camera at it, causing the world seen through the screen to morph into a bunch of different mini games, including mini golf and a target shooting game. The games themselves are pretty simple. Instead of using the D-pad or the thumbstick to control them, you just move the DS around. Oh, I quite like the Face Raiders game. Mm, yeah, that one's pretty good. You take a picture of your face and then it's superimposed on flying helmet thingies that zip about the room. You have to shoot them all down before they manage to take away all of your life. I love it when you shoot and you miss. It actually destroys a part of the background in the real world. Aside from the games, the 3DS also comes with a built-in 3D camera, which is pretty nifty, but not all that useful. Yeah, you can use the camera to take a picture of yourself and build your own me in the game, but it doesn't work that well. They rarely end up looking like you, but you can adjust it afterwards. So. Mm. It's still early days yet, and I I'm not sure if it's going to be a little bit longer before we start to see developers making games that fully take advantage of what the 3DS has to offer, but mm. I don't know, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. It is all about the game, so hopefully it won't just be a novelty thing with the 3D and we'll get some really good 3D games out of it. We'll have to wait and see. Mm. Affirmative. Ah, yes, good. Now beneath his equatorial bulge, a pair of spindly, brittle legs, two pale, willowy arms, the head of a stunned mullet, and atop his muddled dome, a dunce's hat. Why, you're definitely getting better at this. Well, gee, thanks, Darren. We'll have to make that Barjo's profile picture on the website. <laughs> Darren and I have just been having a go at UDraw, and as far as Wii games go, it's pretty unique because it comes with its own fully functional graphics tablet. Now, graphics tablets that professional artists use can cost thousands of dollars, but this one really only costs you a little bit more than a top AAA game. Granted, this unit is an entry-level model, but the basic principle is the same. The UDraw tablet consists of a drawing surface connected to a stylus, with a socket for you to plug the Wii remote into. Once you've got the UDraw Studio program up and running, you draw with the stylus, and the button on the Wii Remote serve as hotkeys for the most common commands. The built-in tutorials will take you through the basics of drawing and painting, but ultimately they're no substitute for experience. And the better your drawing skills get, the more you'll find yourself banging your head against a low ceiling called imprecision. Affirmative. The resolution of the pictures you can draw is fairly low, and even if the cursor on screen shows where you're pointing, it just doesn't feel precise, like you're forever adrift in an ocean of gelatin. The benefits you get from UDraw are the convenience of drawing on your telly and the opportunity to play other games that need the UDraw add-on. Well, if we are to properly assess the value of the UDraw tablet, we should assess the merits of these games as well. Let's start with... Ah yes, Pictionary. You can choose from a handful of brush and pen types, you can make simple lines and geometric shapes, and you can change your line thickness and colour. Each time you move around the game board, one member of your team will randomly have to draw the name of some sort of thing. The other guys on your team aren't allowed to see. The person who did see it then has just 90 seconds to draw a clue to enlighten the rest of his teammates. If they can guess what it is based on his crazy scribbles, then your team wins that point, and you can keep going. That's the way it's done, yellow team. Now, on the one hand, this is the perfect board game for adapting into a UDraw application. The problem is that the lagginess built into the system, while tolerable in free draw mode, suddenly becomes a crippling handicap when you're racing against the clock. I also found the controls to be quite sluggish and prone to weird distortions. The rubber was close to useless for erasing mistakes and the precision was so airy and loose, I feared that the on-screen pointer was off with the fairies. <laughs> 
Nice work, Da Vinci. I hate to say it, Darren, but I think Pictionary actually works better as a board game. Dude's Big Adventure, on the other hand, does a better job of working the U-Draw tablet into a proper game. The game includes four very simple yet very frustrating types of platform challenges. You move the dude by tilting the pad and drawing on its surface, all the while collecting coins to top up your ever-shrinking bonus score. Again, the controller lag is an issue here, an effect that is compounded by the clunkiness of the stylus nib and shaft buttons. There is a gimmick to it all, however. You can customise many of the in-game objects, including the dude himself. I modified this one to look like Barjo. Um, I don't really see the resemblance. Affirmative. The virtual butcher's paper that wraps these objects is a poor substitute for a real canvas. It's impossible to get anything looking just the way you'd like it to. You know, Darren, I might not be the greatest artist, but this U-Draw tablet just felt a bit wrong in my hands. I understand they wanted to make the Wiimote plug into it to, to keep the cost down, but the trade-off is lag, and, and that's just so frustrating. If it ran off USB, things might have been a little bit different. The bundled U-Draw Studio that came with the tablet, I'd say the software is passable, so I'm going to give it 6 out of 10 rubber chickens. And the add-on games? Well, uh, Pictionary works, I suppose, but it's not much better, so I'm going to give that one five and a half. And Dude's Big Adventure, th that was just frustrating, so I'm going to give that four. I'm inclined to agree, Hex. It takes years of practice for humans to get good at drawing or anything else. And while you draw may be a novel place for an artist to start his journey of discovery, it is a tool that any budding Michelangelo will soon outgrow. Well, we're out of time, Spawnlings, but be sure to tune in next week when we check out the multi-character move game, PlayStation Heroes. They have hit pause on our home world. Fascinating. I've always been a fan of Ratchet and Clank Hex, so I'm looking forward to that one. We'll also be checking out the new games for the Nintendo 3DS. Ah, motion control, 3D. What do you think is the next big gaming innovation, Darren? Time travel. Time travel? You can't time travel, Darren. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Really? I think he did. Surely not. I stand corrected. Until next week, gamers, Bajo out. Hex out. Darren?